All right, guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Joining us now is the rad chick, Christina Consalo. Uh, am I, do I say that last name right? I just want to stick with rad chick. Consalo? Consolo. Consolo. But it's okay. Nobody says it right. That's what I figured. <laughs> Um, Christina's the rad chick. She worked on a project. Uh, she asked me for my help on it, and I did a very, very, very small little bit of it. But I thought it was, you know, I thought it was awesome because here we are on the eve of, uh, well, when we when we did this was last night, on the eve of election, and uh, you know, not only on the eve of election, but the eve of Fukushima, that's still an ongoing uh, disaster. The eve of Sandy, which uh, give us give us a report real quick, Christina, on. Uh, any developments out of Sandy and uh, all the nuclear reactors that were in that path? Well, originally there were um, five reactors that had problems, but since then we've had two more in the area plus Comanche Peak in Texas. And today uh, we found out that Palisades in Michigan went down for, um, I'm, I'm not even sure what happened there yet. I haven't read the NRC report, but they they did indicate there was a plume pathway that went across Michigan as this reactor vented steam two days ago, so it's already past us. You know, people weren't warned not to go outside or anything like that. The The real big problem happened, though, at Oyster Creek um, because they were inundated with uh, the storm surge, and um, they had problems then with the backup diesel generators because they became flooded. In fact, they were like seven feet above the flood zone, and it got within six and a half feet of reaching the generators. So they had fire hoses on standby in case Fukushima they needed to all pull over things again. down. It's exactly that's exactly it. I mean what and was the what 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 uh, nuclear reactor is in and Gary if you want to jump in here because Gary does alternative energy uh, and is quite versed in in uh, these matters as well. Uh, but what kind of reactor is that one? Is that the same brand as is it a GE? Uh, the Oyster Fuku- Creek facility, I believe so. Mo- the majority of reactors that have had problems are the Mark I boiling water reactor, like Fukushima. Mm-hmm. And that reactor was actually undergoing um, service at the time. So all of the rods were in the spent fuel pool. And so they're, they're much more radioactive than when they're in the reactor, when they're out of the reactor. Right. And the temperature started going up. Arnie Gunderson reported on that yesterday that the temperature in the fuel pool had started to rise. So, you know, they had all these uh, these uh, firefighters standing by in case they needed to hose things down. And that's, that's their ridiculous. solution, isn't it? And that's, and that's their solution. They'll, they'll, they'll build these things close to water so they can dip a, a hose in there and uh, cool it down when, you know, you, you know what hits a fan. Right. And, you know, they had a storm like this exactly a year before this. I mean, these are like 100-year storms that are now happening every year. And now we have this, you know, huge system moving into the Pacific Northwest, another storm front, a winter storm that's going to be moving up the East Coast. And, um, in fact, that's what I have to talk about on the show that I'm going on at 10 tonight, so I, I need to read up on that. <laughs> well, what, find out uh, exactly you know, what the projections are. You know, these people, they don't have heat, they can't get water, they don't have cell phones, and now the storm is coming. How are they going to, are they going to stay warm? They can't even and, get and a th- listen bottle of water what? from FEMA. Well, it was, yeah, exactly. And, and we've got, I, I'm in this, I'm in the Northwest, and, and we have a massive, I mean, today, it's really bizarre. Today, you know, November 6th, uh, it was 63 degrees in Montana, Bozeman, Montana, far warmer than our, our normal time of year. But by the end of the week, we're going to be at zero, uh, not even, by, you know, by the end of uh, tomorrow or early Thursday, we're going to be at the single digits of zero. This massive storm fronts uh, moving in, uh, you just mentioned, from the Pacific. And uh, there is another storm coming in on the on the East Coast, and we've seen once again, you know, th- this is a, a perfect illustration of why it is absolutely incumbent upon yourself to be ready for disaster. Because, I, I mean, what's it going to take for people to understand that the government isn't, I mean, look at New York. We they, All kinds of warning, all kinds of uh, uh, alerts and, and fear was generated over this storm, and Christina, they're still, you know, they're still muddling around, waiting for gas, waiting for food. I mean, th- th- we could certainly see a big uh, cold uh, nor'easter come down, and a lot of people end up dead over this, just weather-wise. Forget about the uh, reactors. But uh, so anyway, we have these we, these bizarre hundred-year storms uh, or five hundred-year storms. Some people were saying Sandy was happening every year, and we have an out-of-date uh, uh, nuclear facility, uh, nuclear facilities across the country. 
just, you know, I mean, it's Russian roulette, isn't it? There were actually 26 uh, plants that were um, in the, the pathway, and some of them were the oldest ones in the United States. You know, I mean, it's 50-year-old technology, and it's right. completely well, like I... outdated not only from that aspect, but from the aspect of um, seismic activity, earthquakes. I mean, we've seen two earthquakes in New Jersey yeah, just since yeah. the storm. Yeah, crazy, right? 4.0 4 uh, in uh, New Jersey, right in, in the same area. What uh, what happens? Well, I got you. Well, we got your audio working, right? Um, what happens if we get a big freeze in there? Does that affect anything as far as uh, the plants that are already weakened by this storm? All hell breaks loose. Tell you <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're talking about a nor'easter coming this right. way right now. I mean, it, it, it's, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a matter of conjecture. I mean, there's one building, and it's going to come right. through, ba you know, probably follow, you know, essentially the same path as, uh, as that hurricane. So, you know, yeah, we're going we're gonna to take a hit. Yeah, no doubt about it. What? Uh, tell me a little bit because you're you're very familiar with these reactors. Well, nothing, nothing's going to happen to a nuclear plant if it gets cold. Okay, that's it's not like you know they freeze and and the plumbing bursts or anything of that nature. That's that's not the concern. Um, now the, the concern would be if power is cut to the reactor. They need power going to the reactor to keep water circulating and all that good stuff. So. Um, uh, you know, if if um, uh, if their if their power at the the nuclear facility gets screwed with, that could be we could be in deep doo doo. Well, and and if we're heaping one storm on top of another storm, and we already had people, uh, I, I forget, I, I don't know what the count is right at this moment, but yesterday it was 1.8 million that were still without power uh, in that region. Throwing uh, earthquakes on top of that, throwing the fact that the, the government who uh, was allegedly prepared for this storm, can't do anything uh, to get people fuel or, or food. I mean, a, a perfect storm seems to be brewing, not uh, something that already happened. It seems to be uh, on its way. Christina, well, do we have you back? By the way, I think we have Christina back. Yes. Yay! <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm well, not I'm sure what's happening there. Sorry about know, that. Every time, every time you start talking the truth, we get uh, either... Uh, SWAT team's knocking on your door, or we lose you. What's up with that? <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, yeah, no doubt. When we come back, I'm going to play this, uh, I'm gonna play this audio uh, from a nuclear bedtime story. Guys, hang tight. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Got more technical problems. I'm going to just shut up and stay in the background and let you guys carry it, because, frankly, Christina has a, a much nicer-looking icon than I have. I love her icon. It, it's a rubber suit. With a plastic bubble helmet, what is not to love about a rubber suit and a plastic bubble helmet? Charlie, Everybody are you sure you have not, one? Are you sure you're not German, Charlie? I lived there for several years. Uh, that's <laughs> where you got it. Latex suits and well, rubber either, either German or Japanese. I mean, they they've got this <laughs> thing about you know, latex. And a ray gun. She's got a ray gun. <laughs> hey, a babe with a ray gun. I mean, you know, what can I say? Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, that's because I can't have a real gun. Uh oh, oh! Is there a story there? Oh yeah. Because you said the word can't. Yeah. Well, don't share it because we're live on JTV. Okay. All right, guys. Welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. I'm going to get this uh, this audio uh, or this video sent over to Gary so he can run it real quick here in just a minute. Uh, but while I do that, Christina, tell us where we can hear the rad chick. I have a show on UCY TV um, twice a week. It's called Nuked Radio, and it's from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today we interviewed Jeff Wefferson, who is a uh, um, pretty well-known blogger, and he had uh, he, he filled us in on the story behind the Fukushima hoax from two weeks ago and told us what happened there. Whoa, whoa. And, can you, can you, the, what is that? I haven't even heard that. What is it? Well, there was a, a report that went out that the spent fuel pools were on fire, and they had had a fire there two days before that, and um, some, some information got passed along that was inaccurate. It was uh, spread all over the Internet like crazy on YouTube. A few other bloggers got a hold of it and, and made it viral. And um, so it turned out, in essence, it was a hoax, but now since then, 
the cesium levels have gone up um, quite severely in Japan. So we don't know what's going on over there. And that was basically the, the, the gist of our conversation was, unless you actually went to Japan and you looked in those pools for yourself, we really don't know what's going on. You know, we know that they've tampered with video. They've photoshopped pictures of the reactors. When they show us something that's supposed to be inside of a pool in Reactor 4, we really don't know if that's Reactor 4's pool or if it's 5 or 6 or if it's from an entirely different plant. I mean, we're just, you know, at the mercy, try, trying to piece together the information um, and validate it and try to work up, you know, a plan for dealing with this. And it's, it's very difficult and it's very stressful at times. And, and you know, people, uh, people need to hang in there because we're, we're doing the best that we can it just with seems, the information I mean, that we have to go on. Yeah, and it, and it just seems, you know, I said before the break, it just seems like we're headed for this perfect uh, storm, this catastrophe storm of man-made disaster as well as natural disaster all culminating, you know, in uh, these extinction-level events, these only events that we, that you know, we hear, we see about, or we, you know, see portrayed in the Hollywood movies. But, uh, I mean, you know, ha how about uh, as far as levels, some of the video you had uh, in this, vid in this uh, presentation, uh, that we're going to play here in just a minute as soon as Gary tells me we can. Uh, I mean, is any of this footage, because one of it's like a squid that they're pouring stuff on and it freaks out. I mean, is this all uh, Fukushima related? No, that squid is a, a, a delicacy in Japan that you they know. eat. It's a live dancing, I think it's called dancing squid. <laughs> well, I thought <laughs> it, it, looked, it looked like a monster coming out of that bowl. But uh, Gary, are we ready to play this thing? You know, it's right. just a matter of, of statistical probability. We're on a sharp upward curve, and we're it, we will have a Fukushima over here. It's just a matter of time. And the more well, storms we get, the more seismic activity we have, and and they don't fix anything until it's broken. They don't put the money into the plants because they're so expensive to run anyway. Well, we now, really do need the alternative energy people to to step up to this. You know, and hopefully a lot of people were voting for that today. I know it was on the ballot in Michigan to make 25% of the oil companies and so forth use renewables. Yeah, well, you know as well as I do, though, the control, the stranglehold of, uh, of uh, special interest in, in the nuclear lobby, uh, it, it, even the energy lobby, the oil lobby, they're not going to let uh, their profits go by the wayside. They'll fight this thing tooth and nail, and unfortunately, uh, both of these candidates – uh, are their lovers of the nuclear uh, energy lobby, aren't they? Oh, yeah, definitely. And lots of their friends are, are in uh, high places, too. I mean, it was just a fairy tale going to vote today. I mean, I voted straight Green Party because it was really the only choice that I saw in order to send any kind of message whatsoever. It really means nothing. It's, it's all a fairy tale. It really yeah, is, and we're living in this big science experiment, and nobody tells you exactly okay. how bad things are and how it's affecting your health. Yeah, I think I think we we, we have enough time to listen to most of it anyway. We have about six, seven minutes left, so uh, go ahead. Give us the title of this thing, Christina. All right, it's a nuclear it's bedtime. It's a nuclear story. bedtime story. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, rolling. Inside is pretty plain, but inside I have 10,000 parts. As a nuke plant, you are lucky because you almost always get waterfront property. This is so if my insides ever get too hot or the power goes out, it's easy to scoop up water and dump it on me. If my emergency diesel generators go out, which happens a lot, they can sometimes use fire hoses to cool me off too. I'm glad the NRC spokesman brought that up the other day when Hurricane Sandy happened. A lot of people were probably worried about that. This is exactly the same thing that happened to some of my friends in Japan. Fire hoses seem to work okay for them. But I'm not sure, because no one really talks about it. I think there might have been some explosions or something. 
Man, do they have a nice view from there, though. And I heard the Pacific Sushi is really good. Some of us are right next to big cities, too, so we never get lonely. When people see you a lot, it makes you seem like you belong. Sometimes they paint pretty pictures on us to make us look more friendly. I hope they paint some birds and butterflies on me. I don't see too many of those around anymore. Some days I look around me and I see all that wind, water, and sun, and I wonder why people haven't used those things to generate power, too. Maybe they're just lazy. After all, they use it like crazy in third world countries like Morocco. I wish I didn't vent so much steam too, because it really obscures my view. Some days it's really bad, especially if we have a hot shutdown. But people have to work inside of me so I can work properly and things don't melt down. Radiation in the steam is pretty small. So unless you go outside a lot, you're probably okay. I'm not sure why so many kids around here keep getting brain cancer, though. Maybe they sit too close to the TV. Even if we don't sit by a big city, we still aren't lonely. There are lots of security guards around in case a nun tries to throw blood on us or something. Lots of people don't seem to like us. Probably because they think we're dangerous. But that's silly. There have only been a few big accidents that have happened, like Chernobyl and Fukushima, which killed lots of people, poisoned the environment forever, and made the ones that didn't sick, or caused deformities in their kids. But when you think about how great nuclear power is, it all evens out. I hear some people that work inside me getting scared, though because we break down so much. All you have to do is look at the NRC event notification page to see. But it's not my fault that I'm old. My owners don't want to spend the money to fix me up right. They just fix stuff when it breaks. Hopefully it won't be a big break because then people will talk probably about us even more. Most of these people that live around nuclear reactors are poor anyway. The people that own me probably don't think they really count. And of course, the 99 other nuclear accidents that have happened, most people don't even know about, even though they're listed on Wikipedia. They don't like to talk, they don't like us to talk about it either. And you never ever talk about the spent fuel and nuclear waste, how precarious the fuel pools are, especially in the 23 Mark I BWR reactors in the United States. The same style as Fukushima. That freaks people out a lot. I'm actually not too worried about the elections either, because it looks like both Obama and Romney are big fans of nuclear power. All of their friends are the people that own us. Their friends all own the news media too, so since we give them lots of money, they don't talk bad about us. Now that Green Party, those people are just plain scary. They could possibly shut us down, but no one really listens to them. Most people are too busy watching TV, I think. And I should know, I make all that electricity for them. The really funny thing is, electricity isn't even the reason I was made. I was made to be a bomb-making factory. I kick out plutonium like a person craps after a big meal at a dirty taco stand. Then people from the government come along, scoop up the plutonium, and take it to their labs all over the country. Too bad our soldiers get sick from it too. I guess my owners must not care about them either. Even if people really got mad at us, the NRC, who is like the babysitter that lets you get away with stuff your parents won't, will relicense me endlessly so I can stay here forever. So I'm really not too worried about things. I would really hate to lose this view. Maybe they will paint some fish on me too. Because all the ones around here seem to be dead.